What's it really like to teach English here in Italy? This is the subject of this Real Talk video because it's something that I have been doing since I arrived in Italy back in August 2018. I started my teaching career at a Montessori school and I spent two years working there. And then during the pandemic, I transitioned to a different English school. And I have to be honest with you, I've learned so much from my teaching experience. And so today I want to share with you some insights as to why I think teaching English in Italy is such a fantastic idea, but also some reasons as to why I think you should avoid teaching in English because trust me it isn't for everybody and I also want to share some things that you need to be aware of if this is a career choice that you are planning to make. So if this sounds of interest then let's get into the video. So let's begin with the positive shall we? Why is teaching English in Italy such a fantastic idea? Well quite simply number one it's because there is a demand for it. And as anybody knows, when there is a demand for something, you need to find a way to position yourself to meet that demand. And that's how you become successful, not just in teaching, but in life in general. So in Italy, especially here in the South, there are a lot of students that want to learn English because quite frankly, English isn't always taught very well at a state school level. And so students will come to you that are teenagers that are currently learning English at their school, or they may come to you as adults who didn't have a very good education of English at school. And a lot of students want to learn English because they see it as a way of bettering themselves and of potentially opening up careers in other countries for them in the future. And so, you know, where you have this demand, these students that want this, it's a fantastic area to begin your career in. Even if it's not something that you do forever, it's a great way to start your expat journey in terms of finding work fairly easily to begin with. Now, it goes without saying that because there is this demand, there are a lot of English language schools here in Italy itself. Now, these can vary. They take many shapes and forms. You have the private language schools where students will attend for maybe a one hour lesson or a two hour lesson at a time. And then you have schools which follow a more full structure, a more full day. And so, for example, you have schools like that have a specific teaching method like Montessori, the school that I taught at for two years, or you also have other bilingual schools where they will have a percentage of the day dedicated to English and then they teach in the mother tongue of Italian. So for this, there are different setups and different types of schools that require English teachers. There are state schools as well that do require English teachers, but I'm not going to talk about that today because that hasn't been my experience. My experience has been solely in the private language sector and I feel that a lot of people will begin their journeys in this way. So that's the focus of this video. So we have a demand. We have plenty of English language schools to choose from across Italy. And something to note about these as well, some of these English language schools, particularly the ones where students arrive and just do like a one or a two hour lesson, you have some that are the same across all the different regions. So they're chains, if you like. So you have some that you can be in Milan and you see the same English school in Salerno, or you say the same English school in Rome. They are a chain. They may run independently, but they have the same branding and they always operate to the same format. And then you have privately run schools, um, which you know do their own thing. They have their own structure. They have more freedom, if you like, in that respect. Um, so just something to pay attention to because not every language school in Italy is a chain. You can have more privately managed ones as well. So aside from there being a demand and there being lots of English schools to choose from, it's also a fantastic way to integrate yourself into Italian life. Now, I cannot tell you how much teaching has helped me to feel a lot more settled here in Italy. It's been a fantastic way to meet people, uh, not just the students themselves, but also parents or family members connected to that student, particularly if they're a child. It's also been a fantastic way to learn more about the Italian culture. And also not only that, but I've actually learnt a lot of Italian through my students, funny enough, <laughs> especially when it comes to my mental learners, when I need to communicate with them, I've actually learnt some expressions and some words that have helped me to be able to do just that. So, you know, it is a great way to feel settled. And especially if you move to a country by yourself, it's very important that you can find a way to fill a part of the community as soon as possible. And I really do believe that teaching English is a fantastic way to help you to do just that. And another benefit of teaching English has been the fact that 
it can adapt to any challenges that life may throw at it as a profession. Now, of course, we've navigated our way through the pandemic for the past year and teaching was heavily impacted. In presence lessons had to stop, but of course, the show must go on, like the, the profession needed to continue. And so lessons moved and transitioned into an online format. And even now, when we've kind of come out the other side of the pandemic and we have the green pass and we have vaccines, there are still some students that prefer to maintain an online teaching method. And so for this, it's reassuring to know that you are working in a career that can adapt to the challenges of life. Because honestly, there were some careers that stopped when the pandemic hit. And you don't want to be in a career like that, particularly if you're an expat, because you want to kind of have some degree of job security. So for this, it's reassuring to know that you, that teaching, there will always be a demand and there will always be a way that you can find a way to teach, even if there is a lockdown or a pandemic. And especially during that time, like I was probably at my busiest in that time because a lot of students had more free time on their hands and wanted to dedicate it to learning. So for this, you know, there are benefits even in the more trickier moments in life. And ultimately, the number one reason why I think you should teach English here in Italy is for how rewarding it is. I cannot begin to tell you how satisfying it is to see a student who may come to you with a very low level of English, lacking in confidence in both the language and in themselves, and to see them flourish and grow as their knowledge of the language increases and improves, and as their self-belief within themselves increases and improves. It is amazing. And the ultimate satisfaction, of course, is when your students pass their exams, if that is their path. So it is incredible to be on that journey with them. And I think one of the most important things to remember is as a teacher, we have a great responsibility, a responsibility to empower your students. And you know, it's something that I think is somewhat lacking with some of the teachers here in Italy, because I've heard a lot of horror stories from some of my students who have told me that their teachers haven't believed in them, you know, have said some quite derogatory things to them that have disempowered them. It's really, really shocking. And I think, you know, we need to remember the power of our words and the power of what we have as a teacher to be able to influence our students, but in a positive way, not in a way that is going to impact their confidence going forward. So, you know, it's rewarding on so many levels. And for this reason alone, I think it's a fantastic career choice to make if you are planning on moving to Italy. So let's then talk about the reasons why I think you should avoid teaching English if this is your chosen career path, because there are a few reasons why I think you should avoid teaching English. And I think you should avoid teaching English, number one, primarily if you lack passion for the subject and for teaching in general. Let me tell you something, if your sole motivation for teaching English is to have a guaranteed paycheck every month, you will not succeed you will fail, you will not do well with your students, and it will emanate from every single fiber in your body. Because let me tell you something, if you do not have the passion for something, you very, very, very quickly start to resent it. And you start to complain and you start to become negative about what you do. And let me tell you something, it's very difficult to motivate and empower, especially a group of, of students, if you don't have that motivation and empowerment within yourself. So if you lack the passion for English, please don't even bother applying for any English teaching jobs. The students don't need it. The students need people who care about what they do and they care about the success of their students and they want their students to do well. They don't need another teacher that's come here just for the money every month and doesn't give a monkeys about their students' education. So for this reason, really be honest with yourself. If you are not motivated by what you do, don't do it harsh but true. And the second reason why I think you should avoid teaching English is if you want an easy life. Let me tell you, teaching over here in Italy is demanding. It's demanding in the UK as well, I know this, but in Italy, it's next level demanding. Consider, some language schools, you are fortunate, you arrive, you have pre-set presentation of slides that you give to your students, and that is your day. But there are demands even within that because often you have back-to-back -back lessons and you know you have a time demand if you like in that respect but if you work at a language school where you have more freedom if you like as to the types of lessons that you can plan and you 
adapt more to your students' capabilities and requirements, then you have to plan yourself every single lesson that you do. And let me tell you, this isn't a five minute job, not if you care about what you do. It can take anywhere from an hour to a couple of hours, depending on how many lessons you need to plan for. So if you want an easy life and you want to just open your eyes and rock up at work and da-da, let's begin the day, maybe reconsider your career choice because teaching doesn't just begin the moment you step into the classroom, but it begins with the preparation from before and also any aftercare that you may give your students, any support, marking homework, any questions you may answer. It's a continual evolving process. And once you've planned one lesson, you've got to be thinking ahead to the next lesson, thinking ahead to your next student, thinking of ways that you can engage them and help them on their language learning journey. So it's not easy. And especially here in Italy, especially if you work at a private language school, quite often you can work until eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. It's normal for this. And even on a Saturday as well, you can often work on a Saturday here too. So it's not an easy life to be a teacher here in Italy. And so this stems into the passion. If you don't have the passion for it, you definitely will not want to be working so hard and it's going to make your experience here miserable. So if you lack passion, if you prefer an easy life, maybe reconsider your career choice. So let's move on now and talk about the things that you need to be aware of if teaching is a profession that you're thinking of doing here in Italy. So first of all, contracts. Hmm, this can vary depending on the school that you're at and the requirements that are made. But please, in general, when you come to Italy, do not compare your working conditions to the country that you've come from. It's the biggest mistake I see so many people make and it will make you feel very resentful and it will not give you a positive experience. You need to come here and understand that the way things are done in Italy is the way things are done in Italy. Certainly contracts is a classic example of this. In the UK, you were given the majority of times and a permanent work contract, unless the position of the job that you apply for is temporary, in which case you know that from the offset, you know that that's what you're applying for. In Italy, especially when it comes to teaching, it's very different. Often you will begin with what's called an terminator work contract, which means that it is a fixed term contract. And usually it's fixed for the duration of the school year, which means that it will end in June, because this is another thing to consider when you work at a school where students attend all day, they finish their education in June. So obviously with private language schools, they can carry on through right up until the end of July normally because August is considered like the holiday month here in Italy. So there's not many students that are willing to study in August, but your contract will be for the duration of the school year, however long that may be. So you have to just get used to that. It's enough for you to set your life up. It's enough for you to get a rental contract. It's enough for you to open a bank account. It's enough for you to do all the basic things that you need to be able to set your life up. But please don't come here expecting immediately what is known in Italy as an indeterminato work contract or a permanent work contract because it doesn't happen immediately. But there is a point even here in Italy where your fixed term contract needs to become more permanent and that's when it can become an indeterminato work contract. But you are not automatically always given this from the offset. There are many Italians that work here in Italy that do not have an indeterminato work contract. Indeterminato work contract is those normal contracts that I was telling you about before that are issued in the UK. So you can see straight away there is a huge difference, but you just simply cannot compare. It's very, very different. Now, another thing to be aware of is that maybe your contract may not be 100% accurate. Just saying. It's not like the UK where everything's watertight. Here, there's often, you know, a little bit of cooking and mingling and twisting and turning of the words. Just be aware of this, okay? Um, maybe it's the hours that are different. Maybe it's the pay that's different. Maybe it's a lot of things that are different, but it's not going to be necessarily 100% kosher. So just be aware of this, okay? When it comes to contracts here in Italy, it's like a whole different world. <laughs> Um, and also some language schools, be prepared, may want you to become self-employed. Partitiva um, is what it's called here. Now there are some pros and cons to this. You need to do your own research and I really recommend that you do. Um, so, you know, just be aware. There are different working conditions, different working setups. So this is the first thing that you need to be aware of. Also, you need to be aware that Italians work 
hard. And so as I've mentioned before in the reasons why I don't think you should become an English teacher, if you come here and you want regular breaks and you want to go and do your thing and, and be free, understand that here in Italy you may have three or four hours of back-to-back -back lessons. This is how it is here. Students have an expectation. Parents have an expectation. There is a heavy expectation placed on education here in Italy and so for this reason teachers work hard and so understand that maybe your working structure, your regular breaks, your regular lunch times may not always be fixed. So be aware of that, you need to be flexible, it's a whole different working life here in Italy. So you need to prepare yourself for the fact that Amazingly, students here are generally very motivated to learn. Now, I think this is in complete contrast to the UK because certainly when I was growing up, <laughs> um, a lot of my friends, they weren't conscientious when it came to education. In fact, a lot of them left without any qualifications at all. And so for this reason, I feel here in Italy, it's a whole different vibe. Students want to learn, they want to do well, they want to progress. And so for this reason, you will see students completing the homework, attending the lessons, being very focused. It's so refreshing and it's so wonderful to see. And I think it can really enhance your teaching experience as a result. To share with you quite honestly, my experiences, and I will see you in the next video.